say we're doing volumes by cross section. Uh, most most uh, people think this is actually pretty fun. Uh, I'm going to do a 3D simulation in a little bit so you can see that it's it's kind of cool. Um, uh, you already know like the basics of it. All we're doing is summing up an infinite amount. The key is a common cross section. So remember that common cross section. So let me give you an example. So here's an example, and I know it's an easy one, so maybe we'll manipulate it a little bit. Okay, do you agree that this one sheet of, yeah, it's because it's hitting this keyboard right here that I attached to my laptop. Uh, I did this so it could, I'm always thinking of ways to present information better, and, and I think I got it figured out, but we'll see. Um, let's watch this not work now, right? Yeah, no, don't worry. I'll clean it up. I'll clean it up. <laughs> hmm. What's going on here? There you go. Okay, finally. All right, guys. Sorry, guys. I'm back in track. So a common cross-section. Do you agree that this is practically voluminous? Like it doesn't have any volume. It's, there's no girth to it. But look, if I start adding common cross-sections, all these have the same common, uh, common cross-section of this rectangular shape. If I start adding a whole bunch of them, look, boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden, they have girth and they have volume. Eventually, see, look, now all of them together form this. And we can, this is an easy one. You don't need calculus for this one. Length times width times height, and you get the volume of this. But what if, what if, all right, guys, real quick, what if the, so let's assume, let's imagine, if each cross section was the same shape, but it kept getting smaller and smaller. The same shape, the cross, oh, I don't, gotta remember not to put it on top of the laptop, on top of the keyboard. The same shape, each cross section, but it keeps getting smaller and smaller by a scale factor. What type of shape would I have if it keeps getting smaller and smaller? A pyramid, a rectangular pyramid. Do you guys see that? Okay, so that's what we're doing. See, look, all they're doing is getting a common cross section and they're adding an infinite amount. So that's where the integral comes in. So what are we doing? Finding a common cross section. And obviously, this does not have volume, but it has area. And you're adding them all up. When you add them all up, you get volume. Does that make sense? So that's how we're doing. See? So all these little fancy things, all they're trying to sell, tell you is that we found a common cross section. And to get the area, we integrate from A to B. From wherever that cross section starts to wherever that cross section ends. What's up, Espinosa? Tell me. For sure. All right, so check it out. And don't worry, I did a little simulation. I hope that you guys like it because I invested some time last night to figure these things out. It says, a mathematician has a paperweight made so that his base is the shape is the shape of the region between the x-axis and one arc of the curve y equals 2 sine x linear units in inches. Each cross-section cut perpendicular to the x-axis and hence the x-y plane is a semicircle whose diameter runs from the x-axis to the curve. Uh, think of the cross-section as a semicircular fin sticking out of the plane. Uh, find the volume of the paperweight. Okay, what's happening? Guys, it's coming out of the board. You see that line? It's coming out. Let me see if I can kind of draw it. It's coming out of the board like that. The biggest part is right here. It's coming out of the board. I didn't do a good draw, job. It's always hard to draw three dimensions, so that's why I'm going to use technology. So check it out. I, I did this example last night. Uh, so this is called Winplot. You can download it too and use it with your computer. Uh, you got to just make sure that your computer is, is strong enough to handle 3D rendering. So that's why I make sure that you get a, a laptop or a desktop that has a strong enough graphics card. 
Uh, let me import this example that I did last night. No, story eight example one. So this is just, I don't know, you can barely tell because I didn't care about this. This is what I cared about. Uh, let's do sections here. Two sine x from zero, and they said he said semicircles, right? Or they said semicircles. Semicircles is a low value of zero. So let me put zero. Don't worry about that paper. Sorry, but it's, uh, x uh, of pi, and uh, okay, I think we're good. So check it out. Here's how it looks. Let me show you the base. Do you guys kind of see the base there? Yeah. And let me let's see how it looks from the aerial view. Look, that's how it looks. There it is, paperweight. Can you guys see that? And every slice, every slice, yeah, kind of like, kind of, kind of, every slice is a semicircle. Every slice is a semicircle. See? Aerial view. You can see the base. There's that uh, arc sign there. Cool, right? Okay, I, I think it's so cool. So, let's see what this is. Let's figure this out. Look, oh, look, if I would have scrolled down a little bit, you would have seen. So look, here are the semicircles sticking out. And th think about it. You have an infinite amount. So that's what creates that shape. So I want the volume. Volume equals integral from what to what? Zero to pi. And what shape is this? A semicircle. So what is the area of a semicircle? Yes, one half pi, yes, <laughs> and yes, one half pi r squared. So here we go. I'm going to put the one half on the outside, pi r squared, and then I put dx. And this will give me my volume. Now, of course, look, I'm integrating with respect to x. Do I want that r? No. So I got to look at it, and I'm like, well, how do I figure out the r? So we just got to be a little clever. You don't have to be extremely clever, just a little bit clever. So the r, the distance from way up here to way down here. That is not the R, that is the diameter. So if I want the R, I need to take half of that. Does that make sense? Okay, well that curve is dictated. What is this curve right here? Yeah, 2 sine x. So that's your diameter. So I'm going to say diameter equals 2 sine x. But I don't want diameter. I want what again? So the radius is equal to what? Sine x. So I'm going to write it here, 2 sine x divided by 2. So you guys can see that we just got sine x. Cool or not cool? So then you take your calculator, and it, this is a calculator question. One half, well, you know what? I think, uh, no, yeah, I need a calculator because it's going to be squared. Uh, integral from 0 to pi of, you know, put the pi on the outside as well, pi over 2, of sine x squared dx. I'm going to take my calculator. Let me get my calculator. I would always type sine squared x on the y1, guys. Sine x, close it, and just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put this in parentheses. Second, enter parentheses, and parentheses, and then squared. So now it's definitely sine squared. So there it is, my sine squared, second quit. I'm going to go alpha y equals, enter, and I think I had on the outside pi over 2, right? Yeah. Pi over 2. Math 9 from 0 to pi. And I already have sine squared in my y1, so alpha trace y1 and then x. Well, it's already squared in my y1. See? Yeah, you could have just put sine x and then squared the y1 there. Yeah, that's fine. You should get the same, same answer. So I got 2.4674. Two point four six seven four. If there are units, put the units in there. Cubic inches. Because they told me it was in inches. And that's it. Yeah, that's they just wanted volume. No, it's not. How do we feel? No, it, it's not. It, it's it there's volume of the revolution, but we're gonna do that next. Uh, after we do this today. All right. Check it out, guys.
So if you're wondering where are we going to ever use this, uh, for those of you that went to NASA on Saturday, look at what the shape, look, let's look at number two. It says for A through D, find a formula for the area A of X of the cross section of the solid at our perpendicular to the X axis. The solid lies between planes perpendicular to the X axis at X equals zero and X equals four. The cross sections perpendicular to the X axis between these planes run from Y equals negative squared of X to Y equals squared of X. The cross sections are circular discs with diameters in the XY plane. So look at letter A. So they want me to just find the cross section, but I'm going to find the volume. Do I ever ask you? Yeah, uh, the cross section of the square of the diagonal. Nope, I don't, but let's find the volume also. Uh, look at letter A. What shape is that? Where, where do you see that in the real world? Yeah, the, it's the cone of the airplane. Look, that's the cone of the airplane. Imagine an infinite amount of circles. Doo, 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 doo. They just keep getting bigger and bigger. That's like the cone of the airplane. Isn't that cool? So let's see. How do we fi figure this out? So this top one, let's see. What's the x-axis? Here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis. It's a three-dimensional view. The z-axis, you can put it there if you want. Uh, so let's see. Positive, negative. This one in the top is y equals square root of x. This one in the bottom is y equals negative square root of x. Are we still okay? I need the area formula for one of these cross sections. It, what shape is, what's a disc? A disc is a circle. And what's area of a circle? Pi r squared. So pi times the radius. The radius is the distance from the x-axis to that curve. So what is that distance? Square root of x. If you wanted to find the volume, they're not asking for it. If you wanted the volume, it would be volume in terms of x equals pi on the outside, integral, uh, volume from 0 to 4 of square root of x squared dx. So this is one you could do by hand. And that's it. How do we feel, guys? Nothing crazy, right? Okay. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to letter B. <coughs> the cross sections are squares with bases in the XY plane. Okay. So let me go ahead and draw this out for you guys. Three dimensional the way that you guys usually see it. I guess it's there right there already, but it looks like this. And here is my section. And that line is the, is the bottom part of a square. See? No, it's just getting bigger and bigger. Do we see that or no? So, yeah. Well, I want to see it too. What do you mean by pyramid? <laughs> so, like, 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 you keep I don't see a pyramid. Uh, I don't see it. Um, we can model it. You want me to model it? Are you sure? Okay. I mean, maybe like, are you talking like the pyramids and the Aztecs with the, the square pyramids? Like the, the, like there's... I can kind of see it. I, I kind of see where you're talking about, though. Uh, but no, 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 because they have an infinite amount. So it's going to be, it's not going to be a step. There's an infinite amount, and it keeps growing. It's going to be smooth. Uh, I see smooth. I remember playing with, like, these little blocks. Okay. We'll model it right now. All right, here we go. Uh, so here we go, guys. So this right here is a square, and this squared is dictated. This top side is y equals square root of x. This bottom side is y equals negative square root of x. So the whole side is 2 square root of x, like the bottom, the bottom of it. Does everyone know how I got 2 square root of x? Yeah, no? Okay. I did this. You can either say that this is the distance from the x-axis to the curve is square root of x, and I just did that times 2. Or you could say the top curve, square root of x, minus the bottom curve, negative square root of x, and you still get 2 square root of x. 
So just the distance in terms of x. So, and I know there is a square, right? Estrada, tell me. We're okay? Yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm kind of jacked at the moment a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. So this length is 2 squared of x. How do I find area of a square? Which is just the same thing as the square has all sides the same. S squared. So I'm going to go A of x is equal to parenthesis 2 squared of x close it squared. This is how, this is what you would integrate. So I get 4x. Does everyone see how I got 4x? If I wanted the volume of this from 0 to 4, they're not asking for that if I wanted it. If I wanted the volume in terms of x, you would go integral from 0 to 4 of uh, 4x dx. Or you can also write 2 squared of x squared dx. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Okay. Let's go to the next one. The cross-sections are squares with diagonals in the xy plane. I love it. Okay. I hope you love it, too. I know it's not McDonald's, but because uh, uh, McDonald's, I think, has that, that quote. Uh, I'm loving it or something. Okay. So think about it, guys. The cross section, so there's my cross section. That blue line, so I'm going to see if I can color code it, guys. Uh, here's my square. Here's my square, and that blue line is a diagonal. So I have a peak coming out. So imagine it coming out of the board, and it's sharp at the top, super sharp. And half of it's coming out of the board. The other half is going into, like, in the other side of the board. Can you kind of see that? Yeah. Okay. So, I need to find area of this square, guys. Well, I know that the diagonal, the diagonal is 2 squared of x. Are we okay with that? Okay. How, I need to figure out the area. I know that the area of the square is side squared, so I need to figure out what this side is. Oh, I better change the color. I need to figure out what this side is. How do I do that? Yeah, what type of triangle is it? It's a right triangle, 45, 45, 90. And... N and square root of 2. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. See, that's why your geometry is coming back. Oh, so, let's think about it. So, I'm going to put the 2 squared of x right here. N squared root of 2 equals 2 squared of x. What you want is N because N dictates one of the sides. So, I'm going to divide both sides by square root of 2. So, N equals, and I know what you're thinking. You're like, Chav, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, how do I combine? Don't worry, don't worry. Look, watch. You can, if you want, put them together. But isn't the area of a squared n squared or side squared? So why are you going to make life hard for yourself? A of x equals, and I'm going to square this sucker, 2 squared of x over, bless you, square root of 2 squared. When I square this, look what you get. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of x times square root of x is x divided by square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is 2. So 2x. That's the expression for your common, like how to get area. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. The cross sections are equilateral triangles with bases in the xy plane. All right, let me draw an equilateral triangle, guys. That's an equilateral triangle. So again, it always helps to draw a picture. At least it helps me. Every time you draw a picture, I think uh, you get better at it. So here's my diagonal, or my, my uh, cross-section, or where I'm slicing it. They're, they're all perpendicular to the x-axis. And that line right there, let me color code it. This line here is this line here. Cool or not cool? So that segment is 2 squared of x. So this is 2 squared of x, and this is 2 squared of x. If you remember how to find area of any triangle, uh, what was it like? One half. No, but there was another one. Was it, remember, like AB sine angle. You don't remember that? Okay, then don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, we did it. We did it. We did it last year. We'll, we'll bring it up soon. Uh, no, I'm 100 percent sure we did. 100 percent sure. If I cut it like that, that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Mm -hmm. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle n, n, square root of, and 2n. This is where our unit circle came from, guys. That's where we got square root of 3s and square root of 2s and all that good stuff. All right, here we go. This 2 square root of x is like your hypotenuse. So 2n equals 2 square root of x. I need to figure out my short leg. Well, I guess the short leg is just square root of x. 
So that wasn't n equals square root of x. And then the hypotenuse is whatever that is times what? Square root of 3. So here it is. Here's my hypotenuse. And I'm going to put it right here. That guy. That guy is square root of x times square root of 3. Laws of uh, your law, law of exponents. They both have a square root. So I can just go square root of 3x. They're both to the half. Okay, um, Yeah, uh, the height, the height, the height, the height, like, the long leg. Yeah, sorry, miss. <sighs> These last two weeks have been so hard for me, so hard for me. Okay. Well, Saturday, Sunday, Monday are all booked on my schedule, so I won't be able to finally relax until Tuesday. You guys got four more days. Okay. I don't have break. Okay, yeah, but you won't have to do with that. Well, I'd rather be with you guys. Oh. I want to. I want to do the. I want to do the best. I want to be the best. I've been talking to my sis. She's been helping me out a lot. She's been telling me that I'm silly on just life stuff. Like you're just. She says I overanalyze everything and that I should just stop. And I think she's 100% right. Okay. Here we go. This question that you're looking at, I have yet to look at the rubric. This is from the AP exam from 2008. I'm sorry, what? No, you said something about seeing it. No, no, say it. Say it. I don't know what happened. What happened? Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, uh, all right, here we go. You need a calculator. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Here we go. So from 2008 AP exam, let R be the region bounded by the graph y equals sine pi x and y equals x cubed minus 4x, as shown in the figure to the right. Find the area of R. I want you to notice, let's observe, they did not label what is what. Like, remember, sometimes they tell you this is F, this is G, and you can use those letters. This time, because they did not label them, they're going to want you to write the expression and the integral. You do not have to evaluate anything by hand. That's one thing oh, I, need to, I need to talk about the free response question from the mock exam. We will, before the end of this week, talk about that. I, I promise. We have to. I already said promise, and I want to go to heaven, so we're going to have to do it. Um, all right. Let's talk about this one right here, guys. So do I know, you have a calculator, but let's see if we can figure it out without it. Do I know which one is x cubed minus 4x and which one is sine pi x? Uh, sine pi minus top one. Let's see. Sine pi Here's what I would have done. Too. I think, I think, mm, let's see, sine of zero is zero, they're both, and sine pi x, okay, now look, what's the amplitude of sine? One, so I know that it can only go as high as one and as low as negative one, so this curve right here that I'm putting in red, that is your sine pi x, but you have a calculator anyways and you would have been able to figure it out, cool or not cool? Cool. This one right here is the x cubed minus 4x. Yay or nay? All right. From where to where am I going to integrate to find the area of r? 0 to 2. What curve is on top? So right, sine pi x minus what curve is on bottom? <laughs> Make sure that you put it in parentheses because sometimes you guys don't put parentheses. And if you do this, let me take out the parentheses. Is it still correct? No. no, because you can do it, but you better make sure that you put a plus there. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So here it is. Uh, do you have to do anything by hand? No. no, this is called the setup. All you got to do is show the setup and then give me the answer. Take your calculator. I would type the sine pi x and y1. Sine I already forgot what y2 was. What was the next equation? x cubed minus 4. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that was that was pretty legit, actually. All right. Here we go. Math, 9 from 0 to what again? And then I'm just going to put y1. 
minus alpha trace y2. A nice perfect number. So here we go. It's just four. Done. Cool or not cool? All right, letter B. Let's see what letter B says. The horizontal line, y equals negative 2. Okay, so here it is in purple. Here's my horizontal line. Splits the region R into two parts. Okay, I see that. Part 1 and part 2. Right, but do not evaluate an integral expression for the area of the part of R that is below the horizontal line. So they want this. They want that area. They said below the horizontal line, right? Okay. So what do I got to figure out? I got to figure out where those two what? Intersect. You already have it in your calculator. Go to your calculator. Turn off Y1. Uh, go to the equal sign and push enter. And go to Y3 and put negative 2. Don't push graph yet. Click on window. So let's see. How am I going to fix my window? Go from 0 to 2 for X. So 0 to 2. X scale by 1. My Y min. Uh, negative. I would make it like negative 3.5. <laughs> yeah. Negative 3.5. Uh, X max. Uh, it says they said negative 2, so I'm going to go like negative 1.5 or negative 1. And X scale, and I'll push graph. So there it is. I'm going to find where they intersect. Second, calculate. What button do I push to find the intersection? Five. Number five. Look at you guys being bosses. Guess. Remember when you guys couldn't do this and now you guys are doing this like no one's business? Point five three nine one eight eight nine. Save that somewhere. So I would put in here. Let's see. What math would I use? I would go negative two. <laughs> X cubed. I'm just going to say I just did it. Do this. Here's how you show it, guys. So put this like that, and then write x equals, and then you write the numbers that they intersect. I, didn't say that. I, didn't say that. <laughs> I just did it. Point point five three nine one eight eight nine. Point point five three nine one eight eight nine. And what was the other one? Well, I haven't done the other one. Uh, okay, hold on, real quick. Before I I find the other one. I'm going to go to my home screen. I push X, enter, and I, I like to go down the alphabet. So store, and then I'm going to go alpha A. And then I'm going to do the other one. So now I go back to graph. Second, calculate number five. Enter, enter. Scroll to the second one you want. So go all the way. It needs to say the word intersection. So you haven't found the intersection. If it says guess, you haven't found it yet, guys. Push enter. It needs to say the word intersection. 1.6751. 1.6751. Let me put more digits. Uh, 309. Five. Put as many digits as possible. If you want to use A and B, which you can, do this. I stored this into A. I stored this into B. Are we okay so far? So then here I go. I'm going to go integral. Thank you, miss. Oh, by the way, guys, look, you don't have to show any work other than you set the negative 2 equal to that expression, and those are the x values where that, where that happens. Bless you. All right. A to B. You can also type in the numbers, 0. 0.5391, blah, 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 blah. And then what line it comes first, top to bottom? Negative 2 minus parenthesis x cubed minus 4x. Close it. Dx. And, oh, do they, oh, they didn't even want me to solve it. Man, I should, if I would have known that, I would have, it doesn't matter. Right, but do not evaluate. If you were to evaluate it, nothing would have happened. You would have gotten the right answer. You just took off more time, the time that you could have used elsewhere. Are we okay? Okay, check it out. The region R is the base of a solid. For this solid, each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. So what's, so let me erase this. All right, guys, so look what we have. So every time I cross, perpendicular to the x-axis, so this right here, that is a square. It's coming out of the board. It looks like this. 
where this line here is this line there. Cool or not cool? That's what I'll say. You all right? Okay. So here we go. Find the volume of this solid. Okay. I'm going to integrate from what to what? Volume equals integrate from 0 to 2. What curve is on top? Sine pi x. So I'm going to put parentheses. Sine pi x minus what curve is on bottom? Don't worry. We're going to square it a little bit. X cubed minus 4x. Close. Close. What do I do to that? No, no, no. Why? Well, I'm going to put a dx. Square it. Why am I squaring it? Because it's a square. The area of a square, this is my common cross section, guys. The area of a square is side squared. This is going to give you one of the sides. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, we are finding volume. This is area of a square, and I'm, and I'm integrating to add up all the cross sections. All right. So here we go. I already have this in Y1. I already have this in Y2. So no one should make a mistake here. Be careful. Second quit. I'm going to go math. Nine. Oh, I don't need to turn it on. Uh, zero to two, because I'm going to call it directly. Zero to two. Uh, I'm going to open a parenthesis. Alpha trace Y1 minus alpha trace Y2. Close it. Put a square on it. X. Did you guys get 9.9783? Yeah. All right. 9.9783. 9.9783. And there it is. How do we feel? All right. Let's go to the next one. The region R models the surface of a small pond. Okay. So imagine you're a bird. This is a bird's eye view. That's the surface of a small pond. Are we okay so far? All points in R at a distance x from the y-axis. Okay, so all points at distance. The depth of the water is given by. Okay, so depending on what x value you're in, this is the depth. This is this is the depth. So it's going to be similar to what we did earlier with that. Find the volume of the water in the pond. I think we can do it, guys. Volume equals. I need a common cross section. So it's still, let's see, all points are at a distance x from the y axis. The depth of the water is, okay. So my common cross section is still this line. How do I find the area of that one line? You just have a rectangular piece, it's not square anymore. You have this length times the depth. So it's just the slice is a rectangle. Do you guys see it? How do I find area of a rectangle? Like times width, that's all you're doing. So, integral from what to what? Zero to two. What is my length? Sine pi x. Is it just sine pi x? What's my length? What is this whole, what is this length? Don't be scared. Sine pi x is just this top one. I haven't gotten my length yet. How do I get my length? Yeah. Yes. Sine pi x minus x cubed minus 4x. So make sure in your notes that you all put in there that this is your length of that rectangular cross section. How do I get the height of the rectangular cross section? Yes. Because they call it hx, I can call it hx too. Yay or nay? Okay, here we go. Now they also want the volume. Find the volume. So I take my calculator. Let's clear it. Math <laughs> 9, 0 to 2. And then I'm going to open a parenthesis. Alpha trace Y1 minus alpha trace Y2. And then I'm going to close the parenthesis. And I didn't type hx in my calculator, so I'm just going to type it in. What was the expression for h of x? 3 minus x. 3 minus x. Close. And then I put a what? dx. Enter. And there it is. 8.36995.
8.36995. Should we look at this rubric? Did you log out? You you can't do it on your computer? No. Oh. All right. Let's look at this. Look how many points they give. Let's see if we got all the points. Because last time I got we got eight of the nine instead of all nine. Because uh, I didn't read it carefully and I was going too fast. Did we get all three points for letter A? Did we get the limits from 0 to 2? Do we have the right integrand sine pi x minus x cubed minus 4x? Do we get the answer of 4? We got all three. Letter B. We have to have the limits. So they use the letter R and S. Oh, they're lame. Uh, R, did we get one of the intersections to be 0 0.5391889? Did we get the other intersection to be 1.6751309? We got the points there. And then one point for the integrand. Minus 2, negative 2 minus x cubed minus 4x. Did we get it? Yeah. All right, there we go. Letter C. Uh, oh, were there two? Oh, yeah, there was the letter C. Uh, one point for the unit guy, one point for the answer. Sine pi x minus x cubed minus 4x four, four all closed up with a square on it. And the answer was 9.978. Yeah. All right. And then letter D. Notice that it can be rounded or truncated. Uh, they, they didn't write h of x. They wrote 3 minus x. That's fine. We got the same answer. h of x times sine pi x minus x cubed minus 4x dx. 8.369 or 8.370. Did we get that? Yeah. All right. So one of them. Is, there we go. We got all nine points. Can we do this, guys? Is this easy enough that we can conquer it and master it? Okay. So here's what I here's the plan because it is a short week. We're only going to do math till Thursday. So here's what I would like to do. Today would be the practice for cross section for volumes by cross sections, and tomorrow I would like to, if you guys approve, because I don't want to overwhelm you guys. I would like to do volume by rotation because don't worry look do you agree that this was not that bad today so tomorrow can we do something new but still the same volume solids solids of revolution we're gonna be rotating stuff yeah all right so get some sleep make sure you sleep enough guys there you got one delta the estimated time I think it said 26 minutes on my delta so just log into delta you just have one that's all you're doing you're just finding uh volumes by cross sections one little topic and that's it guys